Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, hi, hi everyone. My name is Chris Anizik. Um, I had the fun job of uh, working at the Linux Foundation uh, these days, running the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and also uh, the Open Container Initiative. Uh, in a previous life, I ran open source um, at Twitter, which was a lot of fun. But to kind of get started, this whole talk's about kind of the trend I'm seeing in the industry around the rise of open source programs uh, and a specific group within the Linux Foundation called the To Do Group. So, uh, to kind of kick things off. I'll go over some uh, trends that I'm seeing, and then I'll kind of launch in and talk a little bit about the to-do group before kind of finishing things off. So, uh, you know, first trend that we're kind of seeing in industry that people should see is basically everyone um, out there, the companies are, you know, slowly going through their digital transformation and becoming software companies themselves. Uh, some common examples is you have car companies like Toyota and so on that are, um, you know, becoming more uh, like software companies. Um, Airbus, uh, as we saw today, is going through digital, digital transformation and becoming more like a kind of a, uh, a software company in that regard. In the U.S., we have this example around John Deere which uh, traditionally is like a, they, they make tractors, uh, but they have some cool IoT stuff around uh, collecting data uh, from farms. And so, you know, this tractor company essentially bec is, is becoming a software company. So that's one trend, um, you know, that I'm seeing. Uh, another trend is, you know, not only is software eating the world, um, I'd argue that open source is, is a huge part of that and is actually eating the world. So there's some surveys out there that, um, state that something around 80% of companies are, you know, consuming open source and, uh, you know, around 60% of them are actually uh, contributing back, which is which is huge if you look over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, some other famous examples um, out there is like, you know, Tesla open source kind of all of its patents and said, hey, we're not going to sue you if you use them. Uh, you know, other funny things, if you look on your iPhone um, and you go into your settings, uh, you know, go for legal notices, you'll see all the crazy amount of open source software that actually ships um, with an iPhone um, these days. Um, another trend um, that is coming um, is as more and more things, you know, uh, you know, have software in them, whether it's your, you know, fridge, toaster, car, and so on, uh, you know, more of these things are collecting data um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of data that is being stored is rising dramatically. Uh, this is also uh, along with a parallel trend where the actual cost of data is actually becoming cheaper uh, over time. So uh, it's an interesting trend that's happening, but um, this is just the nature of more of companies becoming um, software companies. Um, come on, click. Uh, another trend is uh, some of uh, what I call web scale or internet scale companies um, these giants, like your Googles, Facebook, Netflix, LinkedIn's, and so on, are basically open sourcing how they actually kind of run their infrastructure and business, uh, which is you know fascinating because you look at companies you know like Google, Twitter, Facebook. Um, it's it's no joke to kind of run at their level, but you know recently uh, Google has open source Kubernetes, you know, which is basically a modeled after how they do their infrastructure TensorFlow, which is how they do AI. Uh, you know, you know Netflix has its whole suite of open source software that you know they basically use to run the service. And then the reason this is happening is because uh, for these companies, software is just a means to an end. Um, you know, they want to open source their stuff so people could contribute and help them uh, eke out any form of uh, performance um, that's possible. So um, this is another trend that is happening. Um, another very interesting thing uh, that is happening is that generally the trend of um, open source uh, projects and companies have kind of, um, in the infrastructure uh, space, have basically gone from like single vendor, you know, uh, systems that are, were closed to kind of open uh, multi-vendor kind of ecosystem. So if you, you know, I don't have time to kind of dive into this full kind of history of, of, you know, what I call like kind of the, uh, you know, cloud. Um, you know, things, you know, if you remember, started out with Sun, VMware, things were, you know, you'd buy Sun boxes if you wanted to scale out. Uh, VMware eventually popularized virtualization. Uh, and eventually things transitioned to like open source versions of these things. So OpenStack was basically kind of an open source version of AWS. Cloud Foundry kind of did something similar with the PaaS, uh, which is kind of open source version of Heroku, and then kind of Docker and CNCF came around with Kubernetes. So things have, are, are, are transitioning to kind of open, multi-vendor, cross-vendor um, ecosystems. Uh, finally, um, a trend uh, here is, you know, some companies are aggressively using open source to uh, increase the quality of the software and also kind of increase uh, competitive pressure against uh, their uh, 
competitors in industry. So one example that was fascinating that happened earlier um, this year, or about a year ago, um, it's an article in Bloomberg that when Google open source TensorFlow, basically their other big competitors recently followed su suit. So Microf Microsoft open sourced their AI stuff, Amazon open sourced the AI stuff. The fact that kind of Google did it first and you know, which I consider AI was like a huge competitive advantage for them, is you know, they're trying to basically set the standard in the industry of how things are done, which will benefit Google over the long term. So it's kind of a fascinating thing, and you kind of see the data in terms of pro project popularity. The fact that kind of Google did this first definitely um, helped them out and gave them a first mover's um, uh, advan advantage. Um, so kind of what do these trends kind of boil down to? Um, you know, my theory is that as companies go through digital, digital transformations and become you know, software companies themselves, they're going to act more like uh, the internet scale giants of today. Their business models may change a little bit, but um, they're going to leverage uh, the software that has been produced by these companies because they've scaled out to very impressive levels. And as these companies scale out similarly, they'll take advantage of the lessons learned from these folks and kind of become more uh, like them, in my opinion. So that's my theory, and we'll see if that actually plays out uh, over, uh, over the years. Um, so one kind of interesting thing and trend related to uh, the trends that I've talked about is, is what I call the rise of open source programs. So um, you know, for folks that aren't aware, uh, a lot of companies out there like Google, Facebook, Samsung, and so on have actually built out open source offices and programs that are dedicated to kind of maximizing the uh, kind of return on investment from uh, their, their usage of open source. And it's kind of an interesting trend because these companies, you know, as I stated before, 80% you know, of companies are using open source software. To actually know how to maximize your return on investment from usage of that generally requires a dedicated office. And also you want to make it a little bit easier for your engineers themselves to contribute back to open source because, of course, there's always some legal uh, you know ramifications in doing that, and you know uh, you heard just you just heard Kevin's talk. You know Kevin essentially helps lead open source. Uh, Bloomberg's kind of like what, what what I would call as an open source program. Um, Another thing is it's not only large, large established companies that are doing this, also kind of smaller startups, you know, have done this. I don't know whether you kind of call Uber, you know, GitHub and Dropbox, you know, small startups anymore, but, you know, they have kind of open source programs themselves uh, also because uh, they see this trend. Um, even Microsoft, um, you know, speak of the devil, uh, has uh, an open source office um, too. And, you know, they just, if, I don't know if people saw the news earlier this week, they actually announced that they've joined the Linux Foundation, uh, which is interesting because it's been about, what is it, like 15 or 10 years since kind of, uh, was it Balmer said Linux is cancer? But uh, it's uh, definitely, uh, you know, changed company over the years, in my opinion. Um, even governments, um, you know, it's interesting job post from, uh, the UK has something called, uh, I think it's the UK Digital Service or UDS, I forgot what the um, abbreviation is, but they're looking for essentially an open source lead uh, to help you know, the UK government go through a digital transformation. So very, very, uh, very fascinating trend. Uh, another uh, thing related to this is uh, companies are actually hiring very senior roles for people to lead these efforts. So uh, earlier this year, uh, VMware hired uh, a chief open source officer um, to kind of help them go through uh, uh, transitions to being a better open source uh, citizen. So Dirk Handel, who's a kind of a famous uh, Linux committer from back in the day, um, had this fun uh, opportunity to kind of dive in uh, into this role. So, uh, what is the to do group uh, that I mentioned earlier in my presentation? So. Um, before joining uh, Linux Foundation and helping uh, boot up these, uh, you know, cloud-based foundations, is I spent time at Twitter uh, creating their first open source office and kind of running it. Um, as part of that action, we had a lot of folks um, from peer companies that also ran open source office. So we had friends at Facebook, Google, and so on. And so we kind of maintained this private mailing list where we would share information with each other. Uh, and uh, eventually what happened is uh, other companies would come to us and ask us, how do you start an open source office and so on? So uh, the to-do group was basically started uh, in reaction to that we can't scale ourselves, so why not form kind of a legitimate group behind this and so we could share the information with others. And so we announced the formation of the to-do group uh, in 2014 uh, at Facebook's uh, uh, At Scale conference. Uh, so what exactly is the to-do group? It's basically a list of companies 
that collaborate on open source best practices, uh, tooling to run corporate uh, open source programs, and just kind of sharing knowledge uh, amongst each other. Uh, it's really focused around what I call corporate scale um, open source. And what I really mean here is, um, you know, companies of a certain size um, have kind of very unique concerns when it comes to open source. Uh, one is just simply the scale. Microsoft and Google and you know Facebook have you know thousands of uh, you know repos that span you know tons of different organizations on, on, on GitHub and even outside of GitHub and in foundations like Apache. Um, there's interesting legal and cultural concerns in these companies because they may have not participated. Uh, in open source uh, uh, before, and you know, a lot of these companies, you know, they, you know, they want to do the right thing when it comes to open source, but they also have concerns, you know, around, you know, they also want to do the right thing for their business. So, you know, they are beholden to their shareholders, uh, but most of the engineers that work there do want to do the right thing when it comes to, uh, you know, open source. And to be honest, most of the time, doing the right thing in open source is actually good for your business, um, also. Um, so, you know. Uh, a big part of, uh, you know, corporate open source is that, you know, GitHub's kind of one in terms of, like, this is where most people are um, doing open source these days. Uh, it's crazy to see how it's changed. Uh, so the to-do group really hopes, uh, you know, works with GitHub to focus on improving a lot of the tooling because there's a lot of tooling that lacks on GitHub when, when coming to dealing with very large corporate scale open source. Some of these are just multiple organization management, managing CLAs, uh, getting good metrics across all your uh, GitHub organizations, uh, and so on. So we kind of serve as a, an unofficial product council, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. Um, so some of the tooling that uh, our members have developed, um, I don't have time to go through all of them, but um, you know, Microsoft open source, how they manage all their uh, organizations within uh, Majure, which is like a thousand plus repos. Um, Facebook open source something called the mention bot that deals with a, def uh, deals with a deficiency at GitHub when you know, someone uh, opens up uh, a pull request, who should review it? This bot analyzes, does like a git blame and says, poke. You should go, this, these people should review it because you wrote the code. Uh, so um, feel free to uh, you know, go to the Tudugu website and see what we've done. Another interesting thing is that we recently joined the Linux Foundation uh, to formalize the entity um, uh, within the to-do group. Um, so LF provides funding and support for us, helps with the legal paperwork and so on. Uh, why, the li why the Linux Foundation? Well. You know, a lot of people don't realize that the Linux Foundation really is a federation of open source foundation. Things like the Node.js Foundation, uh, Open Containers, you know, and so on are all part of the LF. The LF is really all about um, enabling uh, ecosystems where, you know, you have open source projects that turn into products by companies that eventually generate profits that funnel things back into the project. So that's essentially how um, the LF works, and we're happy to be part uh, of the LF. So. Uh, now that I'm kind of out of time, I'll kind of wrap things up with some concluding thoughts and uh, we'll close it out. So to kind of end things is, um, you know, my theory is that, uh, you know, open source will continue to dominate and as more companies go through the digital transformation, open source will be a big part of that. Uh, and in my opinion, you know, more companies will become like software companies. They will act and use software from the internet scale giants that I mentioned. Um, they are going to establish open source program offices themselves, a lot of them, and they will also hire open source leads to kind of help out with that. So uh, to kind of wrap things up, um, you know, that's it. I hope you learned something new. Uh, and if you have any questions around uh, the Linux Foundation, me, or anything like that, uh, feel free to ping me on Twitter at CRA or find me at the conference today. So thank you.